This is my Docker tutorial for beginners. We're going to be going over what Docker is, why you may want to use it, how to install it, and then how to actually get it running um, and start using it. So to start off, what exactly is Docker? Well, it's a way for you to create and run containers. And I like to think of these containers as kind of mini computers. And what you do with them is you put your code inside of it and also all the dependencies your code relies on. So now this container has inside of it everything it needs to run your application. And so one of the great use cases for this is you can take this container with all of your code in it, you can run it locally, make sure it works, and then you can use this container and run it in production. So it's a great way to deploy your application because you can make sure everything works locally and it's sandboxed in a way where it runs exactly the same no matter where you run it. So you can also easily share this with other people and they can run on their computer no problem because it has everything it needs to run your application. So that's kind of the gist of what Docker is and one of the big use cases is for using it for deploying applications. So let's talk about how you install Docker. So if you go to docs.docker.com uh, and then slash Docker for Windows slash install, you can get installed on your computer. You can also use the Mac version if you go to this one. And just a note about this, if you do install it from here, you have to uh, sign up with Docker Hub. So they will make you create an account before you download it. Now, there's an issue about this where people don't like having to sign up for an account before they download Docker. Um, so if you go to this GitHub issue, you can see there's some like workarounds you can do if you don't want to sign up for an account. Um, but once you have that installed and you go through the instructions, uh, what you should have is Docker accessible through the command line. So you should be able to say like docker slash v and you should see your docker version here. So that's where we're going to start from. Once you have docker installed on your computer, um, let's, let's see how we can actually start using this. So right here I have some code and I would like to use docker or run docker um, or run this code inside of docker. So what we're going to do is we need to give docker instructions on how to run this code and what dependencies it has and basically how to package everything up. So the instructions um, we put inside a file called docker file. So it doesn't have any extension, it's just docker file. Um, and so in here we're going to put all of our instructions of how to build the container. And so the terminology here is actually image. So the image is what we're going to build and then when we run that image it's going to be called a container. This will make more sense in a second when you see the process. All right, the other thing I wanted to just mention is I get some syntax highlighting and some auto completion inside the Docker file because I'm using VS Code and I have this Docker extension. So if you'd like the same thing, you can download VS Code and you can use this Docker extension and you can get some nice uh, uh, auto completion and syntax highlighting. All right, so inside my Docker file, the first thing I'm gonna say is from. So from, and then I'm going to specify a base image. So what this base image is, is some base code or dependencies that my application needs. So for example, this is a Node.js uh, Node code that I'd like to run. So I need to have Node.js installed inside this container. So what you can do is you can go to Docker Hub and you can search the basically base images that you can install or just the images you can install in general. So if I search node here, um, we can see all the different node images and uh, the ones we can possibly install. So you can pick out a specific specific version of one of these, um, or I'm just going to install the latest version. So to do that, I'm just going to say node. So the syntax for this is you specify the name of the image, and then there's a colon, and then this is the called the tag of the image. So I'm going to say latest. So usually it's the name of the image and then the version so in this case latest but it may be like 1.12 or so on all right so latest so what this is doing is it's telling put node.js inside of our little computer um, so that's the first thing we're going to do the next thing is i want to move my code inside of this all right so to do that i'm going to use the copy command so the source is going to be um, dot and the destination is dot so the source means this current directory. So I want to grab all the files in this current directory 
And what it's going to do is it's going to get the folders and files. Um, and then the dot here is specifying inside of the image, where do I want to store the files? Just the current directory. So we do dot dot, that'll copy everything inside of the image. All right, so next thing that I want to do is if you'll notice in my application, it actually depends on the express library. We can see that in my package.json, I have a single express dependency. So like I told you, we want to put all the dependencies that our application needs inside of the Docker container or Docker image. Uh, so to do that inside of here, I'm going to say run. And here we can run any arbitrary command. So because we installed node, we have access to npm. So I can say npm install. And so this is going to install all the dependencies that my project needs from npm. In this case, it's just express. But if you had more, um, you could also do more commands here. You could do more run commands and install other things. All right, so we have uh, the Node.js code inside of this. We've copied our source code and we've installed the Node.js dependencies that we uh, need for our project. Next thing is just the command to run our application. So we're going to say command um, and then it's going to give you a uh, brackets and inside of here is basically just an array of the commands. So for example, I'm going to run node on source slash index.js. Um, so basically, instead of spaces, you just put um, each one in its own string. You can also just get rid of this if you don't like the syntax and just say node source slash index.js. So you just put the command that you want to run to start your application. Um, and so also, um, this is basically everything that we need to uh, build our application now or put it inside of a container. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the command line here and we're going to say docker build and we're going to say dash t. So this is where we specify the name of our image. So I'm going to call mine Benawad. Usually here you specify the name of your company or your base name that you use across multiple images. And then I'll do a slash. This is where I'll put like a more specific name. So for example, I'm going to call this node example. And then after that is the colon and then we put the tag name. So the tag here I'm going to specify is basically kind of like a version. So I'm just going to say one and I'm going to do a space. And I'm going to say we're going to build a Docker in the current directory because that's where my Docker file is. All right. So this is the, just the file structure for you. We have source Docker file and then my package.json. The other thing to know is this is just kind of a terminology or a practice that people use when using Docker. You don't have to actually name it exactly like this if you don't want to. All right, so Docker build, we're gonna run this. So what it's going to do is it's going to download uh, the latest node package from uh, Docker Hub, and then it's going to copy our files in, and we can see if it has any output when it runs the command. So here we can see when it ran npm install, it had some warnings, um, and there's zero vulnerabilities found, and we can see kind of the intermediate steps as it ran each one of these lines. All right, so like I said, the thing that we just created is called an image. If you run docker image ls, you can see all the images you have on your computer. So if I scroll up to the top, the one I just created was called Benawad node example, and I tagged it with version one. You could see its ID and when it was created and the size of it. So it's about a, almost a gig. Um, and you can also see any other packages you have, uh, or sorry, Docker images you have installed on your machine. So that image is what you can use and you can share with other people. And then this image has everything it needs, um, dependencies and your code to run it. So really the next thing is how do we instantiate and run this image? So we're going to say Docker run and we specify dash P. This says the port, so this stands for the port that we want to run on. So the first thing we say the port we want to run on our computer. So for example, I want mine to run on 8001, and then we have a colon, and then we say the port that it's running inside the container. So if I go to index.js, I can see I have mine running on 3001. So I'm gonna say 3001 here. And then you just specify the image that you'd like to run. So in this case, I wanna run my Benawad uh, node example one um, inside uh, or on this port. All right, so let's run this. 
um, and it's not going to give us any output or it would so right now it's going to we see the output here I don't actually actually have any standard out so it's not showing anything here but if I go to 8001 I should be able to see my application so if I go to 8001 you can see hello world there so it is now running my code um, so if I hit plus you'll see it kind of locks up your terminal here you can't really control C out of it um, so I open another terminal and I'm just gonna say docker container LS and this is where I can see all the running containers so again the terminology here is we just we create an image with our docker file and then if we want to run our image um, it creates a container and so that's kind of the terminology you'll hear with docker so when it's running it's called a container when you just build it like this you're building an image alright so I can see all my containers that are running here I have a single one you can see some information about it and I can get the container ID here so I can actually say docker container stop if I want my image or sorry my container to stop running so I can run stop here usually takes a second to stop um, and then over here we can see it's gonna relinquish control whenever it stops running alright so I want to show you the standard output that you can have so right here I'm just gonna say console.log up and running so I do need to change to my code so whenever you make a change to your code and you want to uh, rebuild your image uh, we go through that same process again so I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna say docker build and now usually you'll increment the version if you want to release a new version so here I'm gonna say 2 for the tag so the tag here is usually what you'll increment so again, docker build dash t, the name of our image, and then the current directory. So we're going to build our new image. And you'll do this every time you make a change to your code and you want to basically rerun it with the new version. So we built a new image. Um, and so here I'm going to say docker run. And now we can do two. Now let's say we don't want it to, you know, like take control of our terminal. What we can do is we can say dash d right here. And this is going to run it in the background. All right, so if I run that, it is now running my container in the background. If I go to 8001, come over here, it's still running my server. And now if I say docker container ls, I can see it's running my container. So now if I copy this container ID, what I can do is I can say docker container logs, and then the ID here. And I can see the standard out for my uh, container so I can see it says up and running there uh, so there you go and again just to round this out we can say docker container stop on this container to shut it down so there you go that is an introduction to docker